In this module, we are going to discuss about the racial criteria. Now, the first question that arises in the mind of a person is that what do we understand by the term racial criteria? When anthropologists had a feeling that people of one country are different from that of another country, and to categorize human being living in those regions was a tedious task, but still anthropologists ventured to identify three major races. The Caucasoid, who are referred to as white-skinned people. The Mongoloid, referred to as yellow-skinned people. And the Negroid, referred to as black-skinned people. The Negroes were living close to equator. Their major area of habitat was the African subcontinent. The Caucasoids were found in the area above equator, basically in the European continent and partly in the American continent. The Asians had the Mongoloid feature on the extreme North Pole region as well as the Mongoloid variant in the lower portion. Apart from these three major races, there were certain sub-races which were identified by different researchers. The classification of the human populations was given by Kuhn, Garn and Wurzel. It was subsequently given by Houghton, who came out with various morphological features and considered them as the criteria for differentiating races. The racial criteria which were being used to differentiate, he not only took morphological features, the somatoscopic variations, but he even took blood groups into consideration. That is besides the fact that in due course of time, the concept of race was discarded by UNESCO and the term race was replaced by ethnic group. In the present day situation, the term race has a limited usage, whereas the term ethnic group is in force and is being used to represent people from different countries. Going by these features, we take into consideration certain aspects which are anthropometric as well as somatoscopic that have been used by different researchers who classified the human being into various groups or the races. The first such criteria which was taken is stature or standing height vertex. Now stature is such a variable that it sums up the total linearity of the body of an individual. And we find that different climatic zones exhibit variation as far as the height of a person is concerned. Accordingly, different categories based on stature were created from very short to very tall. Even among the very short, we have individuals referred to as pygmies, who are very, very extremely short people. After that, we have 
individuals falling in the short category. Short category people are relatively taller to the pygmy, but they are shorter than the medium height individual. That would be between 130 to approximately 150 centimeters. After that, we have the medium statured people between 150 to 160 centimeters. It's an average between 5 feet uh, to 5 feet 5 inches approximately. Now, this is an average individual category of individual which are spread out almost around the world. The other category of uh, stature starts from 160 centimeters onward to 170 centimeters. This is the category of tall individuals. The tall individuals are having a media, uh, stocky built. Some of them are thin and lean. Most people in European continent are of the tall category. They are beyond 160 centimeters up to 170. Finally, we have the last category is the giants who are very, very tall people beyond seven feet. Such people can be counted on fingers because they are very, very few. And the stature becomes very tall only because of some uh, gene mutation. So that this is how the distribution of stature has taken place and the races have been categorized according to the uh, different categories of the height of individuals and this has been taken one of the most important criteria for racial discrimination and the populations of the world. Basically, the skin color categorizes individuals in three major categories that is the white skin color referred to as uh, the more uh, often found skin color of the Caucasoid group of individuals. The black skin colored, which is more frequently available among the Negroid or the Negro type of people. And the yellow skin color is more frequently found among the Mongoloid people. If the parents of a child have fair skin color, now the children are also expected to have fair skin color. The darkness in the skin color comes according to the quantity of melanin pigment which is present under the skin. The melanin is a dark colored pigment which varies from person to person and it is reflected on the skin color. For anthropologists, when we try to classify people on the basis of the skin color, we don't see the skin color of the face or of the forehead. It is seen on the underarms area, inner side of the upper arm region. So using these, we differentiate individual on the basis of the skin color and get, uh, use it as a one criteria for identifying races or identifying the ethnic groups. Hair is to be studied in two ways. One is the hair color and the other is the hair texture. The variation in the hair color and the hair texture shows uh, can be taken as a criteria to differentiate individuals belonging to different groups or the different races. Now first we will talk about the hair texture. One variety is that you have a silky hair to be very smooth. Other is it's a non-silky. The hairs are straight and they are smooth among the Mongoloid group of individuals. The hair are extremely curly or they are spiral among the and the Negroid. Now, the, as far as the color is concerned, you can have blonde hairs, bluish tinge, you can have brown shades, the light brown, the medium brown and the dark brown shades. You can have uh, brunette uh, shape of uh, hair color. The brown shade is there, which is quite prevalent in uh, American subcontinent and uh, in, the, in the European continent. It is dark, uh, medium brown to light brown shades. Within India, 
we find more of the brown uh, dark brown shade or the medium brown shade but light brown shade is not visible here we have black hair color in individuals so the, this way we take hair into consideration for uh, the texture and the color for differentiating races we have certain other uh, characteristics which are taken for uh, discriminating races as the specific criteria now going by the shape of the head in that what we need to see whether it is long head or it is a medium shaped head or a round head or it's a broad head now for studying the head what we need to do is we need to know the length and the breadth of the head so we take maximum length of the head maximum breadth of the head and calculate an index which is called as cephalic index now as far as the length of the head is concerned it is taken between two landmarks glabella and opisthocranian glabella landmark is present in between the eyebrows right here in the mid sagittal plane and the opisthocranian is uh, present at the back of the head which is most farthest from the glabella now this is taken with the help of uh, spreading caliper so after taking the length of the head we take the breadth of the head which is the, the broadest portion of the head and calculate an index based on this the index is calculated by dividing breadth of the head by the length and multiplying it by 100 using this as a criteria to differentiate individuals based on the shape of the head because what we get from the index the dolichocephalic heads are prevalent among the negroes because they are the individuals who have the longest heads now in case of caucasians they invariably have a medium sized head broader heads are invariably found among the mongoloid group of individuals so this is taken as one of the very important feature in discriminating people because very easily we can have the three major categories through which the individuals can be categorized eyes now there are people who have very uh, broad open eye some people have medium open eye some people have narrow opening negroids all negroes and negroid variants they have very broad uh, eyes all variants of the caucasian have invariably the uh, medium opening of the eye and as far as the mongoloids are concerned they uh, majority of the mongoloids have a fold which is called as a epiganthic fold now this is a fold which partly covers the eye the third component of the eye is the eye color there is an association between the hair color and the eye color the dark color eyes or the black shade of the eyes and the dark black hair are associated and the both are the characteristic feature of the negroes the caucasians how they show the maximum variation in their eye color and similarly the maximum variation in their uh, hair color is also seen they are associated with the fair skin color but the light brown medium brown dark brown these are the three shades quite frequently visible among the caucasians and as far as mongoloids are concerned they also have black to Uh, dark brown medium brown to dark brown and some people have the black color eyes the next feature that we have is the nose 
Nose is another important feature of the face which is used for identifying people as well as discriminating people of different ecological regions. The variation in the size of size and shape of the nose can be seen. Now one thing is we see the profile of the nose. The profile of the nose could be seen if we turn, look at this portion, this is the nasal bridge and this is the nasal tip and this is the septum of the nose. Now this is to be seen whether the profile is straight or profile is concave, profile is convex. So these are the three variations in the profile and then at the tip, whether the tip is pointed, it is round or it is bulging or it is beak shaped. It has an association with the racial uh, features because individuals who possess pointed tips they fall in the Caucasoid category invariably. People with the rounded uh, tip but it is lifted upward is a mongoloid feature. The Negroes have a very prominent, very huge nose. The, they possess the broadest nose and uh, if we calculate the index, the index value would be very, very high because the nasal breadth and the nasal height, the difference between the two is very minimum. Now the last component that we have is the face. It is elliptical, ethical, it may be squarish, it may be uh, hexagonal, it may be pentagonal. This is uh, taken as a very tough criteria for uh, classifying individuals. The Negroes have invariably elliptical long face. The Caucasoids have again long face and some have medium shaped face. Pentagonal face is there among Caucasoids, it is there among some Mongoloids, but Negroes normally do not have pentagonal shape. So going by these variation, we can to some level differentiate individuals belonging to the major racial categories. The major function of anthropologists is to study variation within man. The, some people are short, some people are tall, some people are of the middle size. So can we use this as a criteria to differentiate people? Yes, we can do it because we can have various categories from the pygmies to the short to the medium to the tall and the very tall and the giant categories and classify individuals uh, around the world in different categories. So that is one thing where stature is taken into consideration. The, we have the skin color as another uh, criteria which has been discussed. The third component which we have considered is the hair. Hair from its form, from its color can show variation within man because no two individuals would show identical features. The head was characterized into three basic categories, prolicocephalic, mesocephalic and brachycephalic type. The eye color was taken as a one of the more important uh, characteristic feature to differentiate the, uh, the Negroes, the Caucasoids and the Mongoloids. Coming to the nose, the bridge of nose was considered uh, whether the straight bridge is there or the um, concave bridge is there or the convex type of bridge is there. Then we discussed about the tip of the nose is uh, rounded, pointed or bulging or uh, beak like and uh, we uh, did talk about the size of the nose then finally we came to the facial shape. The shape of the face was considered with different variations whether the face is oval shaped or it is uh, uh, round shaped or it is uh, uh, long face, the squarish face, quadrangular face or a pentagonal shaped face. So based on these features the differentiation can be made of different racial categories for, uh, for the purpose of study of variation within man. Thank you.